So hey guys, I'm back with a new video finally. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna do in this video, so you guys know I never mentioned that I have a Patreon and I never asked for anything. I just uh, make videos uh, just for fun pretty much. And actually there's a few people that actually went into my description, saw that I had a Patreon and started supporting me, which I think is crazy uh, that people went this step uh like on their own um so i just thought i'll thank every single one uh of these people that went these paths <laughs> so the first one is julian thanks a lot for julian for supporting me uh thanks a lot to seifu uh thanks a lot to prince alfie he's my top patreon actually so he's the master of it all i guess uh hussein also a supporter uh thanks a lot origin black uh not origin black origin back uh, another patreon so thanks a lot and my newest Patreon is Pyranavan, so thanks a lot for that as well. So now we're just going to uh, jump right into the video. So in the video title, you can see you shouldn't be modeling cars. Of course, you should be modeling cars. But what I'm trying to say is you shouldn't be modeling cars in Blender. So multiple people asked me to make a modeling tutorial on cars or how to model cars in Blender, which would be cool, and I might actually make one. But the thing is, there's no need to are you not even there's no need you shouldn't model cars in blender because cars are produced in a factory they're actually built and if you're not thinking of your own car designs and you might never even want to build it then maybe you could use blender but in the normal use case you're probably going to want to build whatever you designed in real life um because that's the part that makes money <laughs> usually um so you wouldn't use blender um, and I'm going to show you why you wouldn't use Blender. There's one main issue about Blender. Here's an empty Blender scene. I'm going to create a curve. and Or actually, before I create a curve, I'm going to create a, I don't know, a sphere. So you see, the sphere is not round. And if I start subdividing it, it gets rounder, but it will never be round, you know? So you see this to wherever the other polygon is here will not be round. It's straight. So you can subdivide it more and more and more. But the question is, how far do you want to subdivide this sphere? You're going to basically subdivide it to infinite amount of times. So then another thing you know in Blender is there's smooth shading. But the problem is smooth shading doesn't work in the real world. It's fake. Um, so... This also won't work if you actually want to produce what you designed. So that's the main issue in Blender. So the next thing is you could use curves, you know, like curves are quite round and you can also make them rounder and they seem infinitely round because you can move them around and they're almost the right thing. Uh, but the problem is they're also based on polygons in Blender or on vertices or on faces or on edges. They're never perfectly round. They're just going to seem round and you can't send this to a factory. Like this just won't work. They need a different type of file. So now you're probably asking yourself, okay, what software should you use? And uh, luckily uh, it's not 3ds Max, it's not Maya because those are also polygon tools. So they're basically the same as Blender, but just by a different company. There is one different type of 3D that is used for all cars and uh, basically everything that is actually built in the real world. And it's called CAD. And that's CAD modeling. Blender doesn't support CAD modeling. Um, actually, Maya and 3ds Max also don't support CAD modeling. Cinema 4D doesn't support CAD modeling. Probably all softwares you know don't support CAD modeling because this is a completely different type of 3D. And the funny part is most guys that do CAD that I know only do CAD and they don't even know the poly stuff. And also the other way around, most people that do poly stuff they can't do CAD. So I actually never really met anyone that really was able to do both. So it's really quite different. And CAD is also based on Booleans. So in Blender, you usually don't use Booleans because they mess up your mesh and just make stuff ugly. You do clean topology, clean modeling. In CAD, it's kind of the opposite. Um, you're just going to bool everything. And if you start looking at uh, real products and then look at CAD, you're going to notice why these products look this way because often you see these techniques they use in CAD uh, that end up in real products. So things sometimes are hard to model in Blender because they're based on pretty cool features that CAD usually just has. So in, in CAD, 
a lot of things are just super easy. Like I've got one thing here. I don't know if you can see it, if my focus works. So you see these bumps on this plastic, if it focuses, I don't know. Um, these bumps would be annoying to like model in Blender. Like you could model these bumps and somehow, I don't know, add them on, Boolean them on, I don't know, whatever. But in CAD, these are like standard features, um, stuff like that. So that's why you would use CAD. And another thing why you would use CAD is the surfaces are perfectly smooth. So I don't know if you remember in math, you had like a curve. Um, on a graph and you could always calculate the point on x or the point on y and you could calculate it uh, calculate it perfectly in any spot like it was infinitely smooth basically and that's how CAD works and that's how factories work and that's how these big machines work uh, they need CAD to get controlled you could export stuff from Blender as like an STL uh, and different type of um, export um, files but it's just fake so this is just a translation of your polygons to CAD but it's still not CAD it's still polygon based and you're still not going to have a smooth surface so you could use it like in a 3d printer where things aren't that smooth it would also look fine but if you would make a car or something uh, you can't use polygons and you also don't no one would um, so that's why I use CAD so another uh, interesting example I set up so in a vector program so there's Photoshop or any program, GIMP, and there's uh, Illustrator and Affinity Designer and Inkscape. And this is like the CAD of 2D and Photoshop is like the blender of also 2D. <laughs> so the main difference is here. So we've got two triangles. They look pretty much the same, but when I zoom in, you see on the right, this triangle's rasterized, it's called, and it's pixel based, you would be able to open this in Photoshop. And the left one is actually vector based. This is like CAD and it's infinitely sharp uh, because it doesn't save itself in pixels. It saves itself like kind of in Blender also like with the verts and curves and stuff like this. So uh, one benefit is the file is way smaller than pixels. Pixels are huge. Uh, if you do a 15k pixel image it's going to be i don't know how many megabytes quite big vector base doesn't matter you could print it onto the earth or moon it would matter because it's infinitely sharp um, because it's based on math and not based on this pixel is this color this pixel is this color this pixel is this color and so on but in vector 2d vector it's going to be hard like for example the video you're watching right now if you would do a screenshot there's so many colors this would be very hard to make in 2D CAD, so Illustrator, um, then you would use pixels. So you see everything has a, its use case. Like one isn't better than the other. Just one thing is better for this stuff and the other thing is better for this stuff. So it's also the same thing with Blender. So the thing is also in Blender, you've seen cars. I use cars in Blender. Now you maybe also ask yourself, why do I even use Blender if CAD is so great? Uh, because uh, the reason why is Blender is for rendering mainly and animation and stuff like that and not for modeling. And if you would want to model in Blender, you would model stuff like environments, stones, you would use textures. So you couldn't really, or it wouldn't make sense to make a stone in CAD because it has this crazy shape. You would probably scan a stone. You would probably also not model the stone, but you could model the stone. But cars and other hard surface stuff, you don't make in Blender, you could maybe remodel stuff so for example if you're also working on car games kind of what i mentioned um car games need optimized models so you can model uh, remodel cars and you can make them low poly you can bake stuff over and then they're performant and run in games but um the thing is also so if you want to learn from scratch modeling from blueprints if you're working for a big games company they can't just use cars so they're definitely in contact with brands and these brands have all cars because they're already built. And if they're in contact with rims from certain companies, they already have the rims in CAD because that's what they give their machines to produce these rims. So if the parts don't exist in the real world, you would probably have to make them yourself. But these car games usually have real parts, real brands. And I'm going to guarantee you, every single part is already made in 3D. Every screw, every hole already exists in 3D, otherwise this thing wouldn't exist. So there's actually almost never a scenario where you would have to model anything in the real world that's about cars, except the environment, uh, the roads and stuff, even though nowadays they're probably also gonna scan it. So 
what I'm trying to say is you're probably never gonna have to model a car ever unless you're working for a games company but they're probably going to give you the car and you just have to remodel it so you have a perfect example role model uh, you're just going to remodel it and uh, you're, you might gonna model cars if you're making concepts but all the con uh, designers like car designers that I know that do concepts they actually model in CAD as well. They don't model in Blender. Because also if you started modeling in Blender, like making smooth surfaces, it's actually quite hard. So you have to use shrink wraps and a lot of workarounds. And in CAD, you don't have to use any workarounds really. Uh, or I'm not a CAD pro, so I don't want to say anything wrong here, but uh, everything I've seen about CAD, so many things are so easy in CAD uh, that are so hard in Blender. But also the other way around, of course it's the same, but on cars, I'd say it's just way easier in CAD, way quicker, and Blender's just annoying. So I've also got one CAD example here from a real car, actually. So maybe you can guess this car. I chose a car that you're probably not going to guess, but if anyone can guess what car this is, you really know cars. <laughs> so as you can see, this is a very nice model. It has perfect beveled edges. The reflection is really perfect, like really perfect. There's a hole like right in here and look, it's just perfect. Everything's perfect. And this you could model in Blender, uh, but it's not worth the effort, uh, to be honest. And if we look at the mesh, you're going to see this is what CAD looks like converted to polygons. So it actually looks like it's not modeled well. But just because it's based on CAD. So you see there's like all kinds of crazy triangles, crazy stuff like this. You would think this can't work. But if you go turn back off the wireframe, you see it's perfectly smooth. And this is a good example for CAD. Also in the front here, if you see this, if I would just show you this mesh, you probably wouldn't believe me that this is smooth in any way. So we turn off the wireframe again and go into edit mode after clicking the right mesh. You see there's even two edges right next to each other right here. Like, this can't go well. Like, but look at it. It's perfect. That's CAD. Like, that's just CAD. And that's why you will probably never model a car in Blender. Because it's just not worth it. It's not worth your time. Unless it's like your fetish and you like love modeling everything in Blender. And I also do sometimes, actually. But... If you're actually going to earn money, if you're actually going to work in a real job, especially in the automotive industry, you're not going to model any cars. Uh, if you're lucky, you're going to remodel cars. And if you're a car designer, you're going to model cars, but it's going to be way different. Also, um, if you look here, you kind of see the CAD here. So you see these lines where kind of the meshes like are patched up into like little parts. You can kind of see from here to, uh, I can't even select so ah, wait so it's like this so kind of this patch here this is typical for cad because cad is often like modeled in these patches so you kind of see the flow of the curves they used and the patches and that's how it also gets exported into blender or whatever software you're going to use and also one benefit about cad is so in Blender, there's subdivision modifying, so you can make something smoother and non-smooth. There's also something like this in CAD. It's called just like tessellation. So you can tessellate a model down. So most uh, most cars you're going to get actually have around 70 million uh, polygons or more or less. And a, a tessell tessellated car is going to be around 10 million, but not less. Maybe 6 million triangles, but that's already a pretty uh, low car. Um, so yeah just so you've heard about it once uh, because a lot of people asked about modeling cars this is how you model cars so also one thing i want to show you so if we go here to my browser i modeled 3d uh, blender 3d and you see there's no cars uh like no cars maybe if i go to pick like images there's no cars here no cars no cars no cars ah here's one so we found a uh, two kind of a car so one real car we found in a very old blender. <laughs> and I think it's actually Yafre Render. I think that's actually old renderer for caustics, if I remember correctly. So you see, uh, it's not usual to model cars in Blender. So now we go to Autodesk Alias. And you already see on the first page there's cars. On images, there's nothing else than cars because 
this is how you model cars. Um, and then there's another popular software for modeling cars, iSim Surf or iSim or iSim Classic. And you see, just cars. If we go to images, just cars. And this is not a coincidence. Uh, these are the softwares used to create cars. And it's not about having a cooler interface or whatever. This is just a completely different type of 3D. So yeah, I just thought I had to make a video about this because I think it almost seems like nine out of 10 car guys that model cars or want to do cars in 3D don't even know about CAD or maybe heard about CAD, but they didn't really understand why. And they really think that you have to learn how to model cars in Blender. And then they're maybe struggling because they can't find any tutorials on how to model cars in Blender. And yeah, that's pretty much the reason why, because you don't model cars in Blender. <laughs> So you could, as mentioned, I'm repeating myself for games. Yeah, that's pretty much it for games. If you want to do AR, VR, you can model cars, I guess. But um, in the industry, the real industry, you won't be using Blender for modeling, except its environments and backgrounds. You're going to render with Blender. That's what it's for. Render stuff, render animations, render anim uh, still images, stuff like that. So yeah, that's the video for today. Um, I hope I didn't talk too much random stuff, but, uh, this is like more uh, explainer video. Um, so yep, I hope it makes you understand, uh, how the industry kind of works. Maybe you can now Google into the right direction to find what you want to do, uh, with cars and your future 3D life. Uh, so yeah, that's it for today. Goodbye and see you next week. Bye.